In this module, we'll be discussing two major topics. The first one will be dynamics of the pen, and under this topic, I'll show you how to hold a pen depending on your dominant hand. We'll also build on some core competencies on how to keep your hands sturdy and also write with a consistent angle. Our second discussion will be around scaling and measurements. And in this topic, essentially we'll be discussing on how to write uh, calligraphy in the proper proportions. If you're a right-handed individual, uh, you'll be holding the column about one and a half inch from the tip and the hollow part would be facing downwards. Now make sure that your wrist is absolutely sturdy and the reason for this is that we want the entire chisel tip to be on the surface of the paper at all times. If there's any play whatsoever, you'll see that the pen would lift and the angle would be inconsistent. If you're left-handed like myself, this is how you'll be holding the qalam. Again, there should be no play whatsoever in the wrist and you should uh, produce a consistent angle. Uh, so something uh, of, of this nature where you'd be moving your hand and your wrist uh, would really ruin your calligraphic work. So make sure that none of this is happening uh, during uh, your scripting. Once you've uh, practiced keeping your hand sturdy and keeping the entire chisel tip on the surface of the paper at all times, uh, it's time to practice holding the qalam uh, in the appropriate angle. Now, the angle would vary depending on uh, the script that you're writing. Uh, and for nasq and thuluth, the angle would be anywhere between 50 and 60 degrees. So if I was to uh, script a shape like this, you'll notice that the thickness is at full play as I go up. And as I come down, you'll notice that the stroke is at its thinnest. Now I'll repeat this shape again. So as I go up, you'll notice that the uh, stroke is at its thickest. Reload some more ink here. And as I come down, the stroke is at its thinnest. Let's practice this one more time. As we go up, the stroke is thick. And as you can see, I'm having some uh, ink issues here. And again, as I come down, the stroke would be at its thinnest. Now, what I advise you uh, doing is uh, practice this several times on several sheets of paper, just so you can uh, master the angle uh, at which you should be scripting Nasr and Thuluth. Now, notice that these angles are not 45 degrees. They are actually anywhere between 50 and 60 degrees, as I had uh, previously mentioned. So if I was to actually uh, uh, make a right angle triangle here, you'd see that uh, both sides, or the sides of the triangle, uh, are actually not the same length. Now, uh, let's spend a little bit of time discussing the concept of scaling and measurements, uh, which is essentially a backbone to this course, and it is absolutely critical for you to understand this uh, with uh, complete thoroughness in order to succeed at uh, scripting good calligraphy. Now, as you can see, I've written the letter ta twice here, and I wanted to point out three key differences between these two letters. The first difference is the obvious one, the size difference. The second difference is the difference in the thickness of the strokes uh, between the two letters. So the strokes uh, in the smaller ta are thinner and the strokes in the larger ta are thicker. Last but by no means the least, uh, and really the topic of our next discussion, 
the last difference is the size difference uh, between the noktas of the two tas. So as you can see, the smaller ta has smaller noktas and the larger ta has larger noktas. Now, the nukta is essentially the base unit that we'll be using for all of our scaling and measurements when writing calligraphy. We do not measure letters uh, based on inches and centimeters because it is all relative uh, depending on the thickness of the chisel tip instrument that you're using to uh, write calligraphy. So essentially, if you're using a thicker chisel tip instrument, then naturally, the noktas will be larger and consequently the size of the letter would be bigger. On the other hand, if you're using a thinner chisel tip instrument, then your noktas would be smaller and the overall size of your letters would be smaller. Now, for all those individuals that I've managed to confuse by now, I'm going to use Mr. Dodd here as an example to show you how to use the rules of scaling and measurements. So if we use the nokta to measure the strokes of the dod, uh, we will notice that the loop of the dod measures four noktas by two and a half noktas. Now, if you were to script a dod using a thinner chisel tip instrument, those proportions, the four dots by two and a half dots, is not going to change. So even though the size of the dod would be smaller, the overall proportions would be exactly the same. Now all this conversation going around about the nokta being the base unit uh, for all scaling and measurements, uh, let us briefly have a closer look at what the nokta actually looks like. Now as you uh, probably already guessed, uh, the nokta is far more than just a dot. Okay. Now in order to script uh, a, the perfect nokta that is uh, appropriate for all of your measurements, uh, it is important that uh, this looks like a perfect diamond. Okay. Now, a perfect diamond really is a square that is on a 45 degree rotation. So if I was to make a bigger box around this nokta, you'll see that all of these segments on the side are equal, which means that this nokta is accurate. Now, some of my beginner students uh, get in the habit of scripting the nokta like this or perhaps uh, something like this and though they're uh, great attempts uh, they have to uh, follow two criterias one it, all of the sides have to be uh, of equal length and that they have to be on a 45 degree rotation so it has to be a diamond shape so these two figures would be incorrect uh, and please make sure that you script the nukta like this. Now, as we go along in the course, you'll see me use a circle as part of the measurements from time to time. And what this really means is that the measurement is about half the size of a nukta. So, for example, if you were to see a measurement that was three nuktas with a circle beside it, what this really means is that the measurement is three and a half noktas. In conclusion, I'd like to point out that as important as it is to understand the concept of scaling and measurements and to adhere to these rules, especially while learning, these are merely guidelines to help you out rather than rules written in stone. If a shape is, uh, say, seven, uh, noktas wide and you ended up creating uh, the shape eight noktas wide then that is okay you are allowed to be off by about a nokta or even nokta and a half so no need to be extremely rigid on your scaling and measurements but know them in the back of your head and try to be as close as you possibly can be